So first of all, thank you so much for inviting us to talk today. My name is Emma Anderson um, and I am uh, Head of Therapies for Sunderland City Council um, and I'm also um, Deputy Chief Operating Officer for um, Sunderland Care and Support. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, our Rita journey um, and our Rita journey. Well, Rita has walked with us, I think, through our COVID journey as well, it has to be said. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about who we are and what we do. Um, I'm going to talk to you about why Rita was of interest to us and why we took ourselves down this pathway. We've got four case studies to share with you that for me are examples of the magic moments that I think both Ian and Graham talked about. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the benefits that we think we found in using RITA and also um, you know, where we would like RITA uh, to take us. Um, I have a really interesting role in so much as my time is split between Sunderland City Council um, and also Sunderland Care and Support. So I'm going to talk predominantly about the view of Sunderland Care and Support in our RITA journey, um, but obviously reflect back into my role in the City Council. So in the City Council, I manage the Council's community therapy service. So we have OTs and physios um, and a wheelchair service that work across the city. Um, and for us, I think there was real interest in RITA as a product. Um, and we work really closely with Sunderland Care and Support. Sunderland Care and Support then, who are we? So we um, are a, a company that was established by Sunderland City Council as a local authority trading company on the 1st of December 2013. And we were formed predominantly to deliver the council's in-house adult social care offer, um, providing improved services to vulnerable people across the city. Our mission is that we uh, aim to be a trusted provider of outstanding social and healthcare services, which help to transform people's lives. I just wanted to share with you for a moment our values, really, because I think um, you know we can continually reflect on our values that are around respect, ensuring that we respect our customers and work with sensitivity um, and empathy, respecting equality in people's beliefs and dignity. Integrity is really important to us. Um, we will act fairly, ethically and professionally. We provide service to people that is safe, caring, personalised and we protect and support our customers to live fulfilling lives. We strive for excellence. We use our energy and our skills and resources to deliver the best outcomes for our customers that we possibly can, incorporating their views and the views of our stakeholders in the way in which we deliver our services. And what's also important to us is stewardship. We want to um, obviously always protect our reputation, but really we're interested in the legacy that we leave uh, in the customers and the communities that we work with. We are passionate about leaving things better than they were when we found them. And I've reflected on our values because I think for us, the values of our company, we can see reflected in the RITA product itself. So for us, RITA certainly chimed with the way in which we want to deliver our services and there looked to be uh, a number of opportunities for us there. Um, just to give you a broad overview of the services we, we provide, because actually we, we, we provide a number of services that are very um, broad ranging and far reaching. We provide supported living accommodation to adults uh, across the city who have a range of complex mental health and learning disabilities. We have over 60 environments in the city um, supporting people in uh, you know, various sized households to live their lives safely and independently in the community. We also offer day services to people, so you may live with us or you may spend your days with us. We also offer a telecare service and as part of that telecare service over the last year, we've been growing our technology enabled care team. Um, the aim and the ambition around which is to deliver telecare services um, in a modern way to modernise that support and to really start to explore what technology enabled care actually means for us as a city and what it means for our users. The RITA product was of real interest to our technology enabled care team um, who have worked very closely with us. And I think Chris, who manages that service, is on the call today um, as we've delivered RITA out across our environments in Sunderland Care and Support. 
We provide reablement services to people living in their own homes. Um, we also have a, an intermediate care unit that I will talk a little bit about um, shortly. And the purpose of those services are obviously to help people regain some of those skills that they may have lost um, or need to uh, develop in order to enable them to live safely and independently in the community. We also um, deliver planned care services to people to support their ongoing successful community living. Shared Lives is one of our services, which again is a new and different environment um, for customers. Um, short break care we provide to both children and adults. We are a champion of personal behavioural support. We are very active in the local region um, and we firmly believe in this as a concept uh, that embed is embedded in many of our services. We also provide community equipment services, one of the more traditional services in the city that provides community equipment to adults and children to support with independent living in their own home. Our home improvement agency is um, the city's agency for the delivery of disabled facilities grants uh, across the city, um, also supporting uh, you know, to, to achieve decent home standards um, and support people to live again uh, with minor alterations and adaptations to property. We provide residential re-enablement services to adults who have uh, learning disabilities and mental health issues. And the last service that I wanted to highlight was our single point of contact for hospital discharge or um, the health colleagues on the call will, will know it as the transfer hub. Uh, so that service supports people in out of hospital journeys to identify um, the most appropriate community services to support their ongoing successful living out in the community. So we have a broad range of services, as you can see, and I think when we initially started to think about RITA, we were interested in RITA because of uh, predominantly the benefits that we felt RITA could have for our customers who uh, are living with a dementia. Farnborough Court is our um, bed based community bed based service in the city that provides intermediate care to adults following an acute episode of illness or injury. And we provide farm court to people in either a step up or a step down from hospital pathway. The service is supported and complemented with the provision of occupational therapy and physiotherapy. And we work closely with the council's community rehab team to deliver this to people uh, whilst they're staying with us. I think what we found at Farm Court at the outset of the pandemic was that we were suddenly impacted by the requirement to manage people in isolation following a hospital admission. And that was a huge change for us. Um, the benefits for us of Farm Court uh, up until the outset of the pandemic was the ability to deliver rehabilitation to groups of people and see how those groups of people supported each other. And I think Sharon touched on that a little bit earlier. So, um, our uh, chief operating officer, um, Graham, he first became interested in the RITA product um, and brought it to our attention, really, I think, with the idea of supporting those people in farm record um, who had a dementia. And I think prior to the pandemic, we'd seen a growing number of people coming through that service who had a dementia. So we recognised that that was of real value and importance to us. COVID obviously brought with it some really significant challenges. Um, and there were challenges that we'd not had to face before. Obviously, because we are, we do provide support in an out of hospital pathway, we need to manage those people in, in accordance with um, infection prevention control guidance and government guidance. So suddenly we find ourselves needing to isolate people when they left hospital, and that brought with it a huge challenge. In the slide there, you can see Rebecca, who is one of our occupational therapists, working really closely with the product. And one of the things our therapists start to talk to us about was the difficulty in providing rehab in a meaningful way to somebody whose environment was suddenly restricted to their own room within the accommodation. We'd noted that residents appeared to be significantly physically deconditioned following hospital admission, and it, it felt as though that was really significant, undoubtedly linked to COVID, but probably also linked to the changes in hospital discharge pathways. Um, and again, for colleagues who are familiar with that, the hospital discharge pathway that was implemented nationally at the outset of the pandemic sees us discharging people from hospital when they are medically optimised, and that brought with it a whole new challenge. I think what we've seen in Farnborough Court 
are people who may not have come to our attention at the outset of the pandemic, um, you know, who've suddenly found themselves in crisis. So over time, whilst they've been living with those conditions at home, that period for the potential for deconditioning has increased. But equally, the significance of the illness um, that people had experienced also contributed to that. Um, and we found, because we were now working with people who were medically optimised, that we were working with people much earlier in their rehab journey than we previously had. And we needed to find a way of being able to work with those people in a really meaningful way from a rehab perspective. We also noted really increased levels of general anxiety in our residents when they were admitted to us. And we felt as though there was a connection there potentially with the reduced contact that people had had with their family whilst they were experiencing you know, a hospital admission. Obviously, we've delivered this service for a long time. So we're used to working with people who had been able to see their loved ones during a hospital admission. And any hospital admission is going to bring with it some anxiety because you're in a changed state. You're not entirely sure kind of what the outcome of this episode of illness or injury is going to be for you. Naturally, your anxieties are heightened, but the contact that you're able to have with your family, you know, your loved ones during that period is vital to supporting your recovery. Obviously, hospitals were unable to, uh, to support um, hospital visiting. So we found that people were coming to us potentially having not seen their families or their loved ones for maybe you know, anything up to a month. And that had undoubtedly contributed to their anxiety levels. The speed at which people were moving through hospital and coming to us as well, we felt that was quite a significant factor. Um, and also the kind of general anxiety that I think as a population we were feeling um, you know, around COVID all contributed to this. So we were seeing lots of anxiety in our user group when they came to us. And ultimately, that led to increased levels of agitation. We were seeing customers with, who, who were walking with purpose and um, challenging behaviours a lot more than we previously had. We feel as a therapy team and as a support team that Rita has really helped us to deal with these challenges and equally the challenges that our existing customer group had already given to us. But I'm going to highlight two case studies that I think were of, of, of significance to us. We anticipated that we knew how Rita would work for us, but in the case studies that I'm going to describe, I think we've seen Rita work in a slightly different way to the way that we expected. So Mrs A, she was 85 years old and she'd been admitted to hospital from home following a fall. She had a diagnosis of dementia and a chest infection that was identified on admission to hospital. When she arrived with us in Farnborough Court, she was extremely agitated. And obviously there was a requirement placed upon us then to support Mrs A living in isolation until that hospital discharge period was over and she could engage with the rest of the service. She was really struggling with that requirement to isolate. She was regularly leaving a room to seek out company and support. And as a result of that, she was at increased level uh, risk of falls. So who knew that whack-a-mole would be the thing that would enable us to support Mrs A. But whack-a-mole absolutely supported Mrs A throughout her entire journey with us. It provided cognitive stimulation, it engaged her, it reduced her levels of agitation and anxiety, and it minimised some of that um, uh, agitated walking around the building looking for support um, and really gave Mrs A a meaningful way of spending her time that enabled us to support her with her recovery. As things developed with Mrs A, we were also able to use Rita, um, the music and the imagery uh, that, that comes with Rita to establish the difference between day and night. And we recognised that Mrs A um, had found herself really struggling to determine the difference and that had contributed um, to her levels of anxiety. So Rita was really powerful for us in supporting Mrs A in our environment. And I am just reflecting back on something that I think Mike said earlier about the potential to use Rita with people in their own homes. And certainly from a Farnborough perspective, we would absolutely advocate for that as a development in Rita. We've seen the benefits of Rita in Farnborough Court and we would love to be able to transition people out into their own homes with the same level of support. We absolutely know that there are families supporting people with dementia and other conditions at home for whom Rita would be invaluable. Um, and really support those caring arrangements to continue. 
Mrs B is a slightly different case study. Mrs B was uh, admitted to Farnborough Court. She was an 87 year old lady and she came to us following a four week hospital stay. Um, she had some really complex comorbidities. Obviously, we are a centre that should be supporting people with their rehab journey. However, throughout COVID, we have seen some changes to our user group, some real unpredictability, I think, across our users. Um, and equally, the, the um, concept of somebody leaving hospital when they're medically optimised contributes sometimes to the uncertainty of how their condition will progress. Three days after Mrs B was admitted to us in Farnborough Court, we identified with medical support that Mrs B was actually at end of life. That was really significant for us. As I say, we are a service that actually deals with rehabilitation and found ourselves with Mrs B, who was in a very different place. Mrs B's family felt unable to provide the care and support that she needed at home and everyone felt that it was in Mrs B's best interests to remain with us. So we needed to find ways of enabling Mrs B to have a quality end of life journey. Rita was hugely valuable for us in this and I think again Sharon and Graham mentioned this earlier. The use of musicals, the family immediately um, identified that as a means of being able to reminisce to bond together with each other um, and also to bond with our care team, shared experiences and being able to describe some of that. Um, that really supported to manage some of the anxiety associated with this really difficult time, but it actually also brought with it some enjoyment and contributed significantly to the high quality of the end of life care that we were able to give Mrs B and her family. I think what was really significant for me as um, you know, the, the manager, um, overall manager at Farnborough Court was on the day that Rita was unboxed in Farnborough Court, I started to receive messages straight away. And I know um, the registered manager of Farnborough Court is on this call. Um, messages to say Rita is coming out of the box and people are laughing again in our environment. We'd had a really difficult journey through COVID, as had everybody. Rita brought enjoyment back into the service and that alone is absolutely invaluable. But certainly I hope you can see through the case studies that we've we've raised there, you know, the, the different means by which we felt we could use Rita in Farnborough. Moving us on to residential re-enablement services, I'm going to focus on one of our services that provides care and support for up to six people who have a learning disability or autistic spectrum disorder. The aim of the service is to support people to transition into their own homes following a period of assessment and rehabilitation that might take a number of months. We brought Rita into this environment because we'd seen the positive benefits that Rita had in Farnborough Court and felt as though we could apply them in some of our other um, environments. Um, and this service felt like a really good place to start. We identified that actually all six of our residents in this service were able to engage with Rita and that was hugely helpful. And the team in there initially used the games and the films and the music to facilitate that development um, of, of our understanding of the product, but also the development of relationships between customers using Rita in a non-threatening environment that helped people to get to know each other. Rita has also had really um, huge benefits for us in this service because it, we've introduced it into the assessment pathway and just going back to that idea of prescribing Rita. Um, I think, you know, certainly we find that if we introduce Rita in an assessment pathway, it absolutely promotes that getting to know you period and helps us to understand um, our customers, uh, you know, when they first come to stay with us. What we also identified in this service was that Rita enabled us to support children moving through the transition from children to adult services, purely because some of the functionality in Rita um, it very much chimes with younger people, the gaming, the way in which the product looks. It enables um, those children to actually transition into adult services with a degree of familiarity around some of the products that they're using and the way in which they're engaging with each other. We've got an interesting little case study from this service that we had not anticipated using Rita in this way. But what we found in this service is that we had two customers who were going to call Mr C and Mr D. Both customers are young men with learning disabilities. And what we identified was that they came into service around about the same time and actually they struggled to engage with each other. Obviously, the service is relatively small and it's important that everybody feels comfortable and they are able to engage with each other. 
the team started to use Rita to develop some of the relationship that we knew we needed to facilitate between Mr C and Mr D. So we used the music and the games to start to create a relationship, just an interest in each other, in each other's interests, the things that they liked and disliked, and we were able to use Rita to stimulate that conversation. We then found that feelings and emotions were channeled into that gaming environment instead of being channeled into the anxieties that they actually might have had about each other. When we started to explore the games and the functions that they wanted to, to, to play together, we were able to play to the strengths of each individual in that relationship. And what happened over time was that they began to associate the time spent together on Rita as fun and something to really look forward to. So those disagreements that we'd initially seen were deflected and we created a really positive relationship. This was an outcome that we hadn't expected from Rita, but was really welcomed. The last environment we wanted to touch on was supported living um, and in our supported living services we enable people again to achieve independence, living with support in their own homes. Um, the service in particular that I'm going to describe, we have four customers who have learning and physical disabilities and they, they share the same home. The team in there introduced Rita by exploring the functionality together with the residents. So we unboxed Rita and we learned about Rita together. And initially, I think the team described having used Rita um, to engage with people. We loved the karaoke, we loved the films, um, and it gave people a really positive and fun experience of spending time together, particularly at a time when they weren't able to engage in some of the things that would ordinarily do outside of home. Um, we then uh, transitioned to using some of the other functions uh, in Rita, um, the musical keyboard, jigsaws, things like that, and people began to explore at an individual level and find the things from with you know with each individual that was actually going to benefit them and their their um, care planning. I'm going to talk about Missy e. and Missy. E. She was 48 years old and she had lived with her parents before um, engaging with supported living um, at the outset of the pandemic. And for somebody um, to come into service at that time, particularly with the history that Missy e. had, that was a really difficult transition for her. She went from living at home with parents to a new environment with new people. And because of COVID and lockdown restrictions, her contact with family was significantly reduced. Ordinarily, we would obviously want people to maintain contact with family to support that transition. So there was a real challenge there for us. We also recognised that Miss E began to demonstrate some signs of boredom at times because she wasn't able to engage in some of the activities and things that she would have done at home or that she might have done outside uh, of the uh, home environment. We also identified that there were times when she struggled um, because other residents may appear to be receiving a little bit more attention than her at specific times of the day. Um, and that was a time when she really struggled and she might start to demonstrate um, some quite difficult and challenging behaviours. So initially we introduced Rita to Miss E as a distraction. But we then moved to using Rita as a, a means of anticipating um, the situations that were going to cause her to become distressed. So what we identified with Miss C with, in terms of the benefits of Rita was that it alleviated boredom. It promoted concentration and improved memory and it also supported learning. For Miss um, CE, it gave her a personal sense of independence in so much as she can move things around that screen herself. And actually, she's now able to um, switch on Rita herself and be thoroughly independent in the use of Rita. And that creates a sense of achievement for her and it enables her to have fun. One of the things that the team said to us in this service is that Rita works every time. So in terms of Rita's broader influence in Sunderland, um, we now have Rita in 24 of our services in Sunderland Care and Support, and that is um, a, a tremendous achievement for us. Um, we are routinely looking at the feedback that we receive from those services to understand the things that work, to identify the areas of development, to make sure that we're supporting our residents in the right way. Um, and uh, we, we're certainly finding Rita to be successfully used in all of our supported living environments, reablement services, short break services and day services. 
We are now engaged in a project with our um, community therapy team and also with the City Council's commissioning team to look at how we can promote the use of RITA in other care homes in the city and work with other care providers in the city to understand the benefits of RITA and engage RITA again with those therapists to really make best use of RITA. So just to finish off, I thought we would just reflect on some of the things that, you know, our um, teams have said to us in terms of the things that we really love about RITA um, that we know we're going to continue to use RITA for. We feel as though RITA is continually updated and what that gives us are continuous opportunities. Um, to find different ways of working with people, different benefits to somebody's care plan, and um, different means of, you know, using RITA in an individualised way. There's such a wide variety of activities that promote physical, social and emotional well-being. And I think our therapists felt like Rita was a gift um, that they are able to work with because of all of the opportunities from a holistic perspective that Rita gives us. We absolutely know now how to work with Rita to tailor the support that Rita can give us to meet individual needs. Part of our values are about ensuring that we've recognised the individual needs um, and individual personalities and characteristics of all of our customers. And Rita, we're able to personalise to support people in a way that they want to be supported, to enjoy th their time with Rita in a way that they want to enjoy. Rita brings people together, but it also supports Rita um, people living alone, as was demonstrated, you know, in those um, the, the case studies that we showed in Farnborough Court. Rita can plan ahead because we can integrate Rita into care plans. That idea of prescribing Rita, I think, is very central to the way that we want to work with Rita moving forward. Rita is spontaneous. Um, because it's enabled us to manage some of those uh, agitated or challenging behaviours that we see sometimes arising from our customers. But as I've described, we're also able to use RITA in an anticipatory way to manage some of those behaviours and prevent them. And ultimately for us, RITA promotes independence, learning and personal fulfilment. I could talk about RITA all day, but I'll stop there. Um, and I'm not sure if anybody has any questions or uh, comments. Um, I think um, I should start with the word wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you, Emma. Um, uh, su absolutely superb. And I know Fee, uh, who's just popped up on my screen, uh, has worked incredibly closely with you. Um, and uh, some of the feedback we've been receiving from from all homes has, has been uh, quite staggering. Fee, I don't know whether you want to add anything to that whilst we wait for questions, because I'm assuming uh, some of you guys will have uh, some queries, questions, um, comments. Um, so please do leave them in the chat. Um, but Fee, have you got any comments? Yeah, I think, well, uh, it was a joy working with Emma and the teams there. And I think um, one of the interesting things for me is I've done a lot of implementations in hospitals and in care homes that are focused more on uh, elderly care. Um, and Emma's was the first service that was predominantly for uh, younger adults um, supporting LD. Um, what was very interesting was we got similar outcomes to yeah. every other sector that we've worked in, in terms of that distraction, in terms of that um, person-centered approach. I mean, that's what I talk about all the time in my training and anybody that knows me knows that, you know, it is all around the person not the condition um or or you know the diagnosis it is about the the you know the person centered approach and and i have to say all of the teams um in emma's uh, homes completely bought into the the whole concept um and you know when i first spoke to alison with the farnborough court um uh, outcomes you know i th there was a there was a tear in the eye quite a few times, it has to be said, um, and, and certainly for, for Alison and the team there at, at Farnborough, when they were talking about um, the isolation of their, uh, their residents because they were coming from hospital and they were basically going into an environment for three weeks and not able to have any form of social interaction whatsoever. And when Alison said to me, um, as soon as it went in there, that it was the first time in months that she'd heard laughter and singing in in that environment i mean i do cry a lot in this job anyone that knows me knows i cry a lot but it's normally nice you know for a good reason but i just think something like that is so powerful you know if that's your relative to know that that person is supported and engaged and um you know um 
being cared for in that personal way is so is so important and and that's something that covid has had a massive impact on so you know i think everything that emma and the team and and every other you know area that i've worked with has been you know fantastic in the way they've embraced rita and i do think you know covid has had a, a had a massive detrimental impact on on so many services but actually you know that whole focus around um person centered care has come to the fore um with in a lot of the, the the environments that we work in with with using the rita system and that's been a positive you know you've got to take the positives where you can get them i think um and people have have sort of worked a little bit differently and 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 long may that continue you know i have to say but you know as i say it's been a joy to work with with emma and the team and um and it's great that it's going into more services and i'm i'm looking forward to uh, to being involved in that as well so thank you emma that was lovely and uh you know your case studies are, are, are very powerful and, and and really nice to really nice to hear and i'm sure that that everybody on the call found them as interesting as as i did so thank you thanks Bjorn. and a big thank you from us to you as well because i know it was a difficult implementation in so much as we've done it all remotely as yet we've never met <laughs> <laughs> You know, a lot of people over the last 18 months, it's very bizarre. I think Grace is about the only person that I've actually met. <laughs> and that's because I've been working with it for eight years. <laughs> but, you know, truly, truly fantastic from our perspective in terms of the support that we've had there, um, you know, which has been phenomenal. And Rita has undoubtedly made our COVID journey a lot more bearable. But I think, uh, you know, in terms of the future, uh, we absolutely know where we want to go with Rita. That's, that's that's absolutely fantastic. And COVID, mentioning COVID there, we've actually got an award actually for for use uh, within COVID. But if you think back to the beginning of COVID, um, a lot of, and you got, everyone's heard it. I can't remember, someone came up with a, an anecdote for it, but uh, uh, it, there was always COVID used as a reason not to do something. You know, it was, we can't do it because of COVID. We can't do it because we can't have this meeting because of COVID and so on and so forth. And actually there was a few, Wolverhampton who's going to be speaking next, you, Emma, and your team, and then a number of others that started realising what a difference that, that the technology can have, in particular in care homes, uh, in, in quite a, a daunting and challenging environment. So uh, well done on you guys for taking the um, uh, taking the quite brave step to, to invest the money at that particular point in time. Um, I'm just going to read very briefly uh, a few uh, comments, which you'll be pleased to hear, Emma. We've got uh, Stephen. Emma, you sound so proud of the work and you and your staff are doing and supporting residents to maintain ADL skills and promoting enjoyment. Well done. Award for Emma and her team, please. Uh, hear, hear. Uh, hi, Emma. That was an amazing presentation. Really interesting to hear how Rita is working, uh, giving plenty to think about. Uh, April, well done, Emma. Great work by you and your team. Diane, hi Emma, really interesting to hear this great work and positive outcomes. As a neighbouring council, Durham, who are just looking at testing Rita in some of our establishments, this was really interesting. So yeah, no fees uh, talking to, to Diane and the team. Uh, and Eileen, case studies were great, Emma, really interesting to hear about uh, the wider application. Thank you. So uh, yeah, I'll mirror all of those comments. Thank you.